Good morning, good morning. Hello, Project Connect. I am just full of it today. Yes, I am. I can't wait to paint with you. It is Megan Gill here with Project Connect, and we are going to do Art Therapy Tuesday. Yes, we are. Art Therapy Tuesday at 11 a.m. Yes, we are. This is my radio voice. How are y'all liking it? Yeah, I know. I'll get back to my normal voice in just a minute. I just think that today is just a beautiful day. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? Okay, so today I like to do art therapy at Project Connect. So that is what we are working on today. And we are, I do this every Tuesday. I did it Thursday last week, but you know, whatever. And I'm just going to show you that you can find these videos in the video section of the Facebook feed here. And this is what we did last week. We did, I will sing a joyful noise. I know I'm making some noise right now, but you never know, right? It was so much fun. Each one of these little birds had a personality, and it was very, very fun. So, you can find this on the Facebook feed, and we did this one, too. This one is actually made with Crayola markers. It was really, really fun, but look how bright that looks. Oh, it was fantastic. And then, on the day before Good Friday, we made these beautiful sunsets with Calvary, and it was so much fun, too. So... Um, you could come and join me at any time. It, I'll be doing this at Tuesday at 11 a.m. And you can find those on previous ones. Let's uh, see. I'm waiting for people to get in here. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will. Who knows? But I'll still be here, right? Um... So, today, I was looking for things to do, and I've been eyeing this little project here about lemons and citrus stuff because they have such great colors. So, that is why I chose to do some lemonade, some citrus products here, basically, is what I'm doing. So, we're going to do some limes, some oranges, and I wanted this to be a grapefruit. It's more like a red orange, blood orange, red, but we're going to see what we can do, okay? So, this is what we are working on today. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to try to do some mixing of colors to see if we can't make a better grapefruit or a blood orange for sure. And so, this is what we're going to work on today. Let's talk about supplies. Supplies are pretty open, especially for this project. This project would look really great with some colored pencils. It would also look great with, you know, crayons. You could do this product project with pretty much anything. So this is a very, very um, easy project to do. All you've got to learn how to do is draw circles and you can actually cheat drawing circles. What do you know? All right. So again, we're here at Art Therapy Tuesday at 11 a.m. with Project Connect. You can find me here and you can find me in the video section of the online community of Project Connect. Okay. So come back next week. I don't know what we're doing next week, but it'll be something great. So I wanted to show you what I like to actually paint on. And I love to paint on watercolor paper. One of the things I like about watercolor paper is that it's really, really hard. Um, this is this paper cut in half. And you can feel how thick it is. One of the best things about this is that you could also probably use cardstock, you know, just go buy a whole ream of cardstock at Office Depot or something, and that might actually work really well. So, um, I like to cut up that piece of paper into halves like this, and then I like to cut that up in halves so I have little extra papers. Okay, so this is what I'm going to work on today. So, I wanted to show that. I'm going to take that right there. Yes. And let's talk about some paint. So, this is one of my favorite paints. Uh, I'm going to use watercolor paint. Again, beef, you could use some colored pencils. I love me some colored pencils. 
Uh, you could use markers. You could use crayons. You could use whatever floats your boat today because this is a pretty easy uh, little art therapy practice. So just so you know, this is called an Angora Angora watercolors. This one is their 14 set. They have a 24 and a 32. They're my favorites. And I use them a lot. So this is what I'm going to use today. And you can, in order to start doing watercolor, one of the things is, hello, Angel. Hello, Barb, by the way. How are you all doing today? Please share and tell people, uh, art therapy, art therapy. Yes, I'm in a rare mood today. I hope you all are ready for this. Okay, so let's talk about paintbrushes. So this is called a watercolor mop. I might be squirrel hair. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's really, really soft. One of the other things that I've used before is my makeup brushes. Can you believe it? Like makeup brushes, like what you put on your eyeball makeup brushes because it's so soft. And thank you, sunshine. I agree. I love sunshine. And so this is one of my favorite brushes. It's about a quarter of an inch and I use it for pretty much everything. So um, that is one thing. And you will need a pencil, a trusty dandy pencil. You will want to have an eraser on this pencil, probably. Um, this eraser is harder than a rock, so I won't be using this, but I wanted to teach everybody about a kneaded eraser. <laughs> Now, at Project Connect, we actually have this in our art studio, okay, in our art supplies. But a kneaded eraser is really similar to Silly Putty. And I know y'all probably, some of you youngins probably don't know what Silly Putty is. But it's basically this rubber-like thing. And what you can do is, is it will erase. And instead of making a mess, this right here won't make a mess. And when it gets dirty, all you do is you take it and you do this to it and it cleans itself. And then it's a brand new eraser. Not to mention, you can get really, really, really little, 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 little points to it. So I love, it's called a kneaded eraser, like you knead bread, K with a K. So that's one of my favorites. If you're doing watercolors with me today, you've got to activate them. And I put them, I have a little thing of water that I like to actually spray real quick on. Or you can come here and you can actually, I have no paper towels. Can you believe that? I've got to have paper towels. So I have a trusty dandy paper towel here. Yeah, it gets used a lot. Especially with doing watercolor, you got to have a paper towel. So in order to activate them without a spray bottle, all you've got to do is you got to get your water. You don't need to have this fancy little thing like I have. You can just have a literally a little baby bowl of water or a cup. So I take my water and I put it in my paint. And then I wipe it off on my paper towel. And I do that with every color. So I put water on and then I come in and I wipe it on my paper towel. Water, color, paper towel. Water, color, paper towel. And that is how we actually activate our watercolors. And we do that with every single one of them. So I'm going to move all of that out to the edge. And we are now going to talk about drawing circles. Okay. So... I want you to look at one of the things that this lesson is going to teach us is how to be, how to get close to something and not paint it. Okay, that's one. Two, it's going to teach us like this one is in front of this one. All right. So we're going to talk about foreground and background and that kind of thing, how we overlap things and how that actually helps composition wise. Another thing that this is going to teach us is um, how do you see how I only have one full lemon here and that makes this more interesting because this one right here and these that are only halfway create visual interest. 
So what happens here is, is that this actually shows you that it's half of it. And it makes your brain think and go, oh, that's what the rest of this would look like. And it just makes your brain think a little bit harder. And that's what makes it better. Okay. So let's talk about how do we draw circles? There's a several different ways that we can draw circles. I'm going to get my pencil and I'm going to get my paper out and here's some things you could go find like this right here is a circle you could go find and you could start tracing it if you wanted let's do that for this one right here so I'm gonna trace that all right so there's my one circle I could continue to use that but honestly I'm not one of those people that have to have everything perfect I don't believe art should be straight and perfect and all that other stuff. If you wanted that, you should go get a picture on a camera. Take it with your iPhone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice making circles here with my hand. And one of the things I want you to notice is, is that I hold my pencil up high and I don't have my finger, I don't have my hand down on the paper because that limits your motion. So when you lift your pencil up off of the paper and you move from your shoulder, your shoulder, hey Hannah, when you move from your shoulder, it creates more of a rounded motion to it, okay? But if you do it with your wrist, you see your hand is moving and all these different parts. So that's why we're going to do that. The first thing I like to do before, after I did this, I'm going to try to trace it with my finger. So I'm kind of, I've got my finger, got my shoulder up. My elbow is not on the ground. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to start doing little ghost circles. That's what I call them, ghost circles with my hand. So what this is doing is this is creating muscle memory on how to make this, this circle. Okay, so I'm now going to put my pencil down and very lightly, I'm going to go ahead and make another circle. And you see, I got in this one. That's okay. But you want to make it lightly because remember, we are going to actually erase this. So there's one and two. This one is behind this one. So I'm going to make another one up here. So here I am. I'm ghosting going to come in here and go, oh, I think I like that one right there. I'm practicing. And I'm going to come in here. And I kind of, I mean, I have to do this part really lightly up here because otherwise it feels like I'm, I'm not getting a really good circle. So that's three circles. This one is going to be under this big one too. Okay. So we've got three Let's do a few that come off over here on the left so we can, right now what's happening is, is that this side, the right side is very heavy and we need to like make it equal weight over here on the left hand side so we can actually, I mean right now this whole picture is pretty heavy over here on the right. So here we go. We're going to ghost over here. This one I kind of want a little bit bigger. All right, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to see, and I'm going to try to see how I can do this. So once I do that, yeah, that works. You see how I ghosted that? Okay, and then I'm going to do maybe a little one over here, and I'm only doing a little bit right there. That one might not be necessary, but you know, hey. All right, so I have all of my circles complete. Now I'm going to erase a few so we can make sure that we know what we're doing because we've got a lot of little lines. Do you see all those little lines? So here we go. I'm going to come in and I'm going to erase some of those lines. I'm going to erase because these two, this one is my main one, right? So how many of you, I want to know, probably traced a bottle or a, something? You know, a pickle jar works really good. I love pickles. 
Yes, I have a problem. I'm a hoarder of pickle jars. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that out loud. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I have a lot of pickle jars, but you never know when you may need a thing of water for art or something, you know, or grease or something. I don't know. I just love pickle jars. They're perfect size too. Okay, so here I am. I have cleaned this up a little bit. You see all that? That looks good. So now my next step is we've got to make the pinwheel this right in here. So before we do anything, I think we're going to make the skin on every single one of these. So I'm coming in here and I want you to look and watch before you do it. I'm doing short little strokes. You see that? I'm doing short little strokes. I'm not sitting here and doing this all in one time. Because if you do this all in one time, it's going to look cattywampus and it might be too thick in places and it doesn't matter. And another thing is, is that when you half a lemon or an orange, so I'm going to come over here and do this one. If you notice, sometimes the skin is actually thinner and thicker in other places. So, that's completely okay. So, I'm coming in here. You know, sometimes on a lemon, I, you know, depending on what kind, right? They can be really, really thick and sometimes they can be really, really thin. So, I'm coming in here and I'm adding just a little skin. That outer layer, that hard layer of whatever this fruit is that we're making. So... And I did it with short little baby strokes. That is very important because it's a good practice. Now, I'm going to sit here and we're going to find the center of every single one of these. Now, notice some of these we're not going to be able to see, so we're going to have to imagine it. Imagining. I'm imagining. Yeah, that's Southern for imagining. Imagining. Yeah, whatever. Right. Okay, so I have put my circle right here in the middle, which I think it's a little off, but I don't really care. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a little one right there. You see that? Over here, this one is probably right at the middle here. So I'm going to just add that little circle. This one, I think I'm going to put right there. And this one over here, I'm not even going to put because I can't see it. All right. So it's just over here somewhere. All right. I'm going to have to wing it. So now we've got to figure out how many halves, how many, I don't even know what you call those things that are slices. Mm, maybe it's a slice of an orange or whatever. Right. So we've got to make these little triangles. So, here's one thing I've learned about making these, and I started looking at them. Mine are a little thick right now. So, since we're starting out, I don't think it really matters, but I want you to know that the thinner you can make this area right in here in between these little triangles, the more real it looks, but also the more you have to pay attention to making sure that your colors don't bleed with your watercolor or whatever, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start here and I'm going to make a cross, an X right there. And now, in between each one of these, I'm going to add two triangles. So, I'm going to come here. I'm going to use this one right here. And I'm not going to touch You see that? Now, here's something that I want you to know. I am going to cut off this whole section right here. I don't want I don't want drawings in that little area. I want them to stop there. And you could even put more if you wanted to. So I might put 3 here. And if I'm going to put 3 here, I'm going to start at the middle. 
you know, sometimes they are skinnier, right? So I'm coming in, and that's two, and then this is three. And I'm going to use that line right there. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same over here. I think I'm going to do three here. I'm going to start in the middle. And it really, back to, do I do three or two? It's really going to be up to you. It doesn't matter, honestly. I like to go ahead and make these lines because it gets kind of confusing when you start putting paint on it. So this one, I think I'm just going to add two. Something else I've noticed is sometimes they're not all the same when you actually cut open one of these things. All right. So you have the skin. Then you have this little area right here, which is white, which is not going to have any paint. And then you have your triangles. And in between each one of those triangles, we have the white. We're not going to paint in that. It gets confusing. It's okay, though. All right. So on this one, I'm just going to make my line here. And I'm going to come in, make it there. And I'm going to fill in all of them as I go and do this. Sometimes it's gonna be thicker and other times it's not. The key is not to have these things touching any other line. That's the tricky part. So I've done that right there. Now I'm gonna come over here. Now if you'll notice, I am moving my piece of paper around. One thing that I've learned about doing all of this is that we do not have to make this there's my two lines this one's gonna go in here somewhere so i don't have to worry about it so i'm gonna start here and i'm gonna come in and you'll see how i do this kind of sketchy i don't and sometimes i use the line that i just made and sometimes i don't Honestly, I'm all about how do I make this easy? Because why do we have to make everything so complicated? Why so serious all the time? All right. So, there's that one. Now, I did not make my little circle here around that. And I'm going to have to. But I'll do that in a minute. So here I am. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to draw that right there. I'm going to draw my center where I don't want any lines. And now I'm going to come in and this one's a bigger one, right? Bigger ones can be tall and skinny or they can be thicker. You know, but if it's a grapefruit, grapefruit has a whole lot of these little doodads, don't they? slices my mama would fix me grapefruit in the morning and she would pre-cut every single one of these so they would be easy to cut open you know to get out with a spoon we even had special spoons for grapefruit they all they had like little sawtooths on them i don't know if that's an actual thing but i know we had them I don't know if it was actually for grapefruit, but it sure did work better. And this one, I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to add some triangles to make it look like the slice. All right. And that is what I've drawn. I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit. All right, so if you get any questions, like this is your time where you can use your eraser. You can clean it up. So I'm going to clean this part up right here. I'm going to clean up inside of some of these. This one right here is a mess. One of the other things I'm going to do is make sure that I don't have any lines. Yeah, see, that looks good. All right, in that little spot. I'm going to actually erase that one. Erase this one. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start painting. The fun part. Woo! As we all say, yay! 
Okay, so this is when you're gonna get out your colored pencils or your paint and we're gonna go from here. So I am going to get some yellow. Nice and simple here, right? And I'm going to try to make sure, so I've got some water on my brush. I'm coming in here to my le yellow. I almost said Lego. I've been watching the Lego Masters. Oh, it was such so fun. Okay, so I'm only going to paint inside my squares. Not my squares. What are these? These are triangles. And I'm going to be real easy and real slow so I don't get, I leave that line. It's kind of tricky. And I'm not being t super detail oriented right now but I am going slower than I normally go because I've got these fine lines something else that you might find is that if you don't have a lot of paint um wait a minute if you don't have a lot of water on your brush you can control the paint a little bit better so what that means is use less water I'm gonna flip it around because I have found that I can only paint one direction <laughs> Boy, I've got all kinds of little cliches today. One Direction. Um, okay, so I'm coming in and I'm moving it around. And I've done all of my little slices now. I'm sure you all are probably not as fast as me. That's okay. You can catch up. I'm now going to do the skin. The skin is important. But remember, we've got a couple different lines there, right? We've got this one and that one. So we're going to paint the outside here. And we're going to just go all the way around. And I want you to pay attention. It's short little baby strokes. Short baby strokes. Nothing major. Okay. And here we go. And that's one. And now I'm going to move on to my next one. All right. So I think I'm going to do another yellow one, though. Since I've already got this on here, I'm going to do another yellow one. And I think my yellow one's going to be this one down here. So I'm going to just go ahead and do it. Now, the reason I think that we should have something of the same is because it also helps create um, unity, right? It makes it look like, oh, this is not just some random. Let's just use every color in our toolbox. We have a method to our madness. That's important. Okay, so I have now painted two. I've been very, very careful. Come on, there you go. You never know when it actually um, focuses or not. Okay, so now I'm going to do orange. And I'm going to have this one be my orange one. The one underneath this lemon. So... You could do them all lemons if you wanted to. And the only thing that you would do differently is that you'd start adding a darker color to the ones behind it. So I'm going to take my orange. And when it's really close to this one, the skin, I am trying really hard not to have them touch. You may want a finer little baby brush than me. I'm not worrying about too many details other than I just don't want my paint to touch anything else. I want clean little lines. So I'm coming in and I'm just adding that right there. Now I've got to add me some skin. And I'm adding that. And I'm adding that. I haven't had a good orange in forever. Or a little clementine. This one looks more like a little baby clementine, doesn't it? Because it's small. All right. Let's add a lime. Who wants some limes? All right. I'm going to come over here and do my lime over here in the green. So I got my green. Same process. Use less water if you feel like you can't control it. Okay? Okay. So, I had a lot of water on my brush right then. So, I might not go back for more. I'm going to come over here and get more paint, though, but not more water. You always need to wash your brush out 
with water before you change colors. Have y'all ever seen those watercolor palettes that like looks like a muddy mess? A kid got a hold of it and mixed all of the colors. Well, we don't want that. We need to be nice and clean with our water. So basically, we cannot contaminate. No contamination. <laughs> yes, we're on a we're being quarantined, so we are not contaminating each other. All right. I'm moving this over like this, and I am going to paint this one. Now, I told you I wanted a grapefruit, but I don't really have a pretty pink. Like, this is almost too dark of a pink, so I'm going to make it. What? Yeah, I'm going to make it. I'm going to first start with orange on this. So, and I'll be honest with you, I have not tried this, so the teacher is now going off the books off the books yes don't you just love it when the teacher is going off of what she planned and what she's tested that's always fun then you get to go oh whoops it's always fun when the teacher does that all right you never know what may happen i like to have some excitement in these classes what can i say all right, I am now painting this. Now, we have now done all one, um, all one layer. And that's very important if you're doing, honestly, anything. If you were doing colored pencils, I'd say do only one big, just get some color down. I'm really big into that so you can see the whole thing, Okay. Then what happens is, is you go and you add a second layer because the more layers you add to these things, the more detail you get. So for example, look, you know how when you cut into a lemon or whatever, they have these little lines in these little things, veins. So, hey, Ashley, how you doing? What you need to do is, are you back on crayons today? I bet you have crayons today. She did a fantastic piece with foxes with crayons. I'd never seen anything like it. It was beautiful. Okay, back, I'm back to, back to, back to um, business here. Yes, I'm so glad. You should be able to replay this and you'd be able to see it. So, in order to do my second layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to get my darker gold color, okay? Or I could go with orange, but I think I'm going to go with gold. All right? And I'm going to come in and I'm going to add it to one side of every single one of my triangles. Every single one of them, I'm going to add it to it. Dog hair. Got to get the dog hair out. That's important. I'll tell you this, you want a good brush that doesn't shed when you're doing watercolors. So if you have cheap brushes and it's shedding, I would suggest you actually go find one brush that you go, this is my watercolor brush and I will not use it for anything else. So I've done all one side of this. I'm now going to come in and I'm going to do a little bitty spots on this part right here, the skin. All right, that was layer two. I'm gonna come back and guess what? I'm gonna do it with my orange. I think I'm gonna continue with that goldy color because I think it works pretty good. So I've got my goldy color and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do one side of every one of these little doodads. My triangles, not doodads. I'd say when I started teaching all this, I had to get really good at figuring out what shapes were, you know, I, because I always say like that dude at, you know, that one right there, but you all can't see everything I'm doing sometimes. So I have to actually like use my words. Okay. So I've done one too. I'm going to come over here to my green. So because this one's green, I'm going to use green over here. Ah, uh, you know what? I should probably do this yellow one, too. I forgot about him. I'm going to come over here. Just do a little bit. 
Yeah. Do a little bit on that area right there. All right. I'm going back to green. So I'm going to use a darker green this time. No, I'm not. I'm going to use the same green. I'm going to use the same green. I really like that lime green. I think it's kind of pretty. So one side of all of these triangles. And then come in and do the skin. You see how they're starting to pop? Each time you add a layer, the color gets more and more concentrated. Now, remember, this wasn't going to be an orange. This is going to be a grapefruit. So we've got to make pink and peachy color. So what I'm going to do here, we've added orange. I'm going to add red. So I've got some red on my brush. I'm going to go over everything that I did. And I've added... Yeah, that looks good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't that look so pretty? Maybe it's a blood orange. Who knows, right? But I'm thinking it's a grapefruit. Now, grapefruits have more of an yellow-orangey top there, skin. You think I should continue making this? I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. Oh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Okay, guess what? Round three. Round three is I'm coming over here with, to my yellow. Again, this one. And I'm going to get my yellow. My yellow that I used. The first yellow. So I'm getting some yellow. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to add one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. You notice sometimes I'm doing two, sometimes I'm doing one. I'm adding lines in here. Sometimes they overlap what I just did and sometimes they don't. Now this one right here, you see how this one's really dark? Well, that kind of bugs me. So I'm going to come in here and I've got the same color on my brush but do you see how I'm just kind of smudging it smudging it and how it's getting a little bit less dark okay I'm gonna come over here to my orange and I'm gonna do that to my orange taking my orange I'm adding my little lines this is where you might want to have a smaller brush I don't normally care about the size of my brush, but this is when I find, oh, maybe I could use that. All right, so I've done my orange. I'm going to go over here to my green. I forgot about my yellow again, didn't I? That's what I do. So I'm coming over with my yellow, and I'm adding some spots. I'm adding some spots right there. Now, I'm coming back to my green. All right. Here we go, some green. So, I've got my green, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to add little lines. You don't want a lot of water on your brush. The more water you have on your brush, the less you, likely you're going to be able to control it. So, watercolor is really all about controlling your water intake. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody should be drinking 64 ounces of water. But, you know, this, we're wanting to limit the water. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I'm pretty crazy. All right. So, I'm really liking this grapefruit thing happening over here. One of the things I want to do, we need to add some little lines to it. So, I think I'm going to go back to my orange. And I'm going to add... Just a few, not many. And see, they bled, so that means I had too much water, but that's okay. It does look different than this orange, but I kind of need it more pink. So I'm going to add more red right now. While it's wet, I'm adding red. One of the things that's going to do is you see how it starts bleeding? And I'm barely touching 
my thing, my paintbrush down on the water. And that's how I'm getting that pretty pink color, peachy color. All right. Liking it. Liking it a lot. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I think I need to get a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go back to my yellow. We're now on round four. How many rounds? How many rounds? How many rounds really depends on how bright do you want it. Okay? Because watercolor always dries lighter than it is, period, when it's wet. So you get to decide how bright do I want it. Another way to make things darker, if you want them, is to use a darker color. So I could even come in, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I'm going to go into this brown right here. What? I'm going into some brown, and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to put a little bit in here. If you're scared, don't do this step. I'm putting it next to the middle. And I'm doing it while it's wet, so it blends a little bit. You see that? I'm going to take that same brown, and I'm going to come over here and do it inside this orange too. The reason I'm doing this brown inside the orange and yellow is, is because browns normally have a lot of yellow in them. Now, does that mean I'm going to go over here and do it into this green? No. Guess what color I'm going to use for the green? I am doing it over here in my grapefruit, but you can't tell because it's too wet. I am going to use blue. So I've got a little bit of blue on a paintbrush. And I'm coming in and it's a little bit of wet. And do you see how I'm adding that in there? Now, it might be too much for you. If it's too much, what you do, like this one's starting to be too much. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take my, wa I'm wiping it off really good. It's almost dry. And I know that this is still wet because it's bleeding. And I'm coming in and do you all, what? The disappearing watercolor. Oh my gosh. Isn't that fantastic? Whoop, whoop. Okay. So I'm liking this. Now here's another thing. Just to make this fun, because you know, watercolor should be fun and art should be fun. I have dots. Now, I'll tell you, you can sit here and flip it, but it goes everywhere. So I have to tell you, I honestly, you're going to have to be strategic, but random. What? Yeah. All right. Strategic, but random. So I'm going to take my green. I've got it on my paintbrush. And it's a barely a little touch. Barely a little. Because the bigger you touch down, the more likely the bigger the dot is. Okay? So, that's my green. I'm now going to come in with some yellow. I've got some yellow on my brush. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm making sure they don't touch. Again, have you all noticed this? No contamination, right? <laughs> Six feet away. Social distancing. These little dots are social distancing. Never really thought I would have that conversation teaching art. All right. And see, that's getting a little bit fun. That's good. While we're doing this fun step, we're waiting for things to dry and rest because... The best part about this is the black outline, or I feel like it is. You all may not like it, but I do. I think it's fun. This is a little much for me, so I'm going to come in and just see if I can't make that go all the way around. All right. I think I'm going to add some orange dots in here, too. So I've got me some orange. It's a little bit brighter. The more you push down, the bigger the dot. The smaller you push down, the smaller the dot. It looks like fun f confetti. My mother hated confetti too. Oh my goodness. 
Well, it was just so messy, right? But how fun is this? <laughs> Looks like it's had a party. Okay, so I'm going to see if this is wet. I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to put it, and it's on it, so it's pretty wet. So because I'm a cheater over here, I'm going to sit here and do this. Some of you might be going, well, how do I paint the white part? The white part is actually the paper. That's really important when you're doing watercolors. Now, if you are painting with, well, if you're doing it with uh, colored pencils, you could use white, but it's still not going to use, the, it's not going to show up well. The only thing on white that shows up well is really, really white paint. Ooh, aqua blue dots really makes nice contrast. Ooh, I bet that is. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to add me some dots, some blue dots in here. Ooh, isn't that pretty? You're right. Now it really looks like a party. That was from Barb. Barb says we should add some little blue dots in here. And now I have got a whole lot happening over here. I don't know if I would choose all of these dots but because I am just in a great mood today and just absolutely love making dots, I added them. That's nice. Okay. So, I like to use a black pen. And the reason I like this type of black pen is that when it dries, it is permanent. Which means you can add water to it and it doesn't go all over the place. But it has to be completely dry before you do that. So, this is called a... Let's see if I can pull it up there. Uniball Signo 207 Bold. Now, I like the bolds the best for my art. So, what I do here is, as you notice, it's short little baby strokes. It's not all one. So, short baby strokes. One of the reasons I do short baby strokes is because if you do short baby strokes, if you mess up, it just looks like... You're doing it on purpose. And so you don't have to sit here and do every single one of these lines. If you notice, I'm kind of doing every other one and I'm not doing even a full line. I'm just doing parts of my triangles. And you see, I'm not even sometimes on the line. I'm inside the triangle. It doesn't matter. I do think that you sometimes have to highlight the skin there because it kind of gets lost. So I'm going to do that first on this green one. Come in. And I don't, I'm not adding anything to the center just yet because I had an idea about the center after I made this. So I've got that. I'm doing this one. All right, guys, this is looking fantastic. Now, when this is posted, I want you all to post your picture in the comments section so everybody can see your work. And so this is my art therapy practice during quarantine, and it was fantastic. It doesn't have to be fantastic, but one of the best things about art therapy is, is when you show it, the response you get from people I promise you, it's always beneficial. It tells you what you're thinking. It tells you what other people are thinking. And you get like some pride because you go, oh my, look at what I did today. And that is one of the best parts about art therapy. All right, you see how messy I'm being with these little doodads? On purpose. Because if you were doing it really straight line and you mess up, it looks like, uh-oh, you messed up. But if you're messy all the way around all the time, it looks like you did it on purpose. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so one of the things I thought about doing in the center here were, you know, they always have seeds. So I'm just going to add some little dots here. You see some of them go inside some of this because, you know, when you get into a lemon, how those big old seeds are in there and then you put it in your tea and it's like everywhere and you're like, oh, well, that's what we're doing here. All right. Yeah, I also like curly cues. 
And since I'm doing a confetti party, might as well have some curly cues, right? All right. And that, my dears, make sure you sign it. And you might want to put the date on it because you never know, April 21st. Isn't today like the first day of spring or something? Maybe. Okay, so I hope you all have a fantastic day. I hope that you enjoy this beautiful day because it is beautiful here. And I want to see these. So put these in the bottom of your, the comments, all right? And I will see you next Tuesday. Tuesday, Art Therapy Tuesday at 11 for the next class, for the next Art Therapy Tuesday. I hope you all have a great week. I'll talk to you later. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Barb, for watching. And I can't wait to see everybody's work. All right. This will be in the video section of your community. All right. Bye, guys.